What is up guys? Welcome back to another Travel Tips video. I'm Josh Pavano, and it is so good to see your smiling faces. Well, I think they're smiling. You're probably smiling because you're planning on going to one of the most awesome countries in the world. Today we're talking about how much it costs you to camper van across New Zealand. Now, I just did the South Island for 10 days, and I had the camper van for nine of them. So I'm gonna go through the exact pricing of what it costs for me to do that. I went from Christchurch to Milford Sound and back to Christchurch. That's super important for you to know because that'll affect your gas prices and it will also affect your time of having the van. So pay attention to that. But let's start with how much the van cost. We went with a camper van called Hippie Camper or Apollo and we didn't get their lowest level, we got like the next level up. It was a very small price difference, but that van for the nine days cost us $289. Now we also added on like the full comprehensive insurance and that cost $400. Now that is optional, but it's important for you to know that in New Zealand, there are no such things as not at fault accidents. So if someone were to rear end you, it's actually your fault and you would have to pay for that difference. So when I heard that, I got a little bit nervous and knowing that I drive on the other side of the road and it was a stick shift van that I thought the insurance would be a good buy. Okay, with the camper van, you can get a self-contained camper van or a not self-contained. Basically, toilet, no toilet. Now, what's important to know about that is you can only do the free camping, aka camping at public land sites, if you have a self-contained vehicle. And these sites are becoming less and less available, and you have to spend more time paying for campsites. Now, either way, at a campsite, you're going to be able to plug in, which means you can get heat, you can get electricity to charge your devices, you can you know, access your microwave. So we stayed at a campsite every single time because we did not have a self-contained vehicle. Now, campsites usually charge you per person or per spot, and it's usually per person. So if you think it's gonna cost you less if you split it amongst a bunch of people, it will for the camper van, but it might not for the campsites because usually they charge you per person. We spent a total of $455 on campsites over the nine days, plus one night at the Juicy Snooze right before we took off at the airport early in the morning. Now you also are gonna need gas, obviously, to drive from wherever you're starting to wherever you're ending. Like I said, we started in Christchurch and drove to the southernmost point of the Southern Island. Well, not the southernmost point, but southernmost tourist point in the Southern Island, Milford Sound, and then drove all the way back up to Christchurch. And that in gas costs about $585 for nine days. Gas is pretty expensive on New Zealand because it is an island and you're also using a camper van which sucks up a lot of gas. The last thing I think you should incorporate into your pricing is food. We spent $767 on food throughout our time there over nine days. That's with two people though, so you need to keep that in mind. It could cost more or less depending on how many people you're bringing along this trip. We also went out twice, once in Queenstown and once in Wanaka. Although the meals were great, it did end up costing us about 100 bucks per meal. so. We probably spent about $550 on groceries and the rest of it on going out and eating. Couple pro tips. If you're gonna be drinking on this trip, obviously don't drive your camper van, but do take advantage of the happy hours. There were quite a few happy hours where you're getting beer for like $4 a pint, which is super, super cheap. Also another pro tip for food is that most of the campsites that you're staying in have kitchens. Take the pots and pans and stuff that you have from your camper van and actually bring them into the kitchen and use that because you do get charged a cleanup fee if you don't clean your van at the end. So what we did was just cooked our food in the campsites and we just pretty much kept our kitchen as clean as we possibly could the whole time. So at the end, we didn't spend a whole lot of time having to clean the camper van up to avoid that $75 charge of cleanup. So all in for two people, nine days with a camper van and one day in transit. It costs us 2,500 Australian dollars. I'm gonna put the exchange rate down here for you guys at the time, just so you know how much that was costing me in US dollars and euros, and so that you can use your currency and make it easier for you. So there's a few ways to save some money here. One is you don't get the insurance, and the second one is you can just have more people come on a trip with you to split up that van cost. I didn't include any activities in this, and skydiving is pretty expensive in New Zealand, and that seems to be the activity that everyone wants to do. So make sure that you look into that before you go and do this because that can really set you back a good $500 to $700 if you want to skydive while you're there. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this travel tips video. If it was helpful for you, please smash that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because I'm always posting new travel tip videos. And I love interacting with you. So if you have any questions or comments, just throw that in the comments below. I'll be sure to respond. Or you can hit me up on Instagram at Josh Pavano. I'm always on there as well. 
I look forward to interacting with you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Love y'all. Bye-bye.